everyone, this is a follow-up video to the uh, video that I made to demonstrating how to create a bar graph in Excel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add standard deviation error bars onto your bar graph. Alright, so here is the data that we plotted in that previous video. Uh, where I looked at average resting heart rate in smokers and non-smokers in this semester's cohort of Bio 204 students. Um, and now just looking at these two bars, um, we might conclude, hey, there's some, something crazy going on here. Smokers actually have a lower resting heart rate than non-smokers. Um, but these bars are really close together and it's hard to tell uh, just from looking at them whether these two groups of individuals are really different from one another. Um, and to, to quantify that, we'd actually have to use a statistical test, something like a t-test, uh, to test that directly. Um, however, you're not required to do that in Bio 204. What we're going to do uh, instead is graphically display the variability in the data using error bars that show the standard deviation. All right, now remember that standard deviation just uh, uh, gives you an indication of how closely clustered your data points are around this average that you've calculated. So when you're showing standard deviation, you're, you're depicting the variability around the mean, right? That's, it's called the standard deviation of the mean. All right, so here's our data set that we used uh, to, to generate these averages um, that I showed you in the previous video. So here are the data that I uh, averaged for the non-smokers group, and then down at the bottom, the data that I averaged for the smokers group. Similarly to how we calculated that average, we had Excel do it for us. We're going to have Excel calculate our standard deviation also. So we have to type in a formula just like we did for average. We say equals STDEV is the formula for just uh, standard sta uh, standard deviation in Excel. And again, we have to say open parentheses to let Excel know that we're going to tell it the data that we want it to calculate the standard deviation for. And when you do that, you're going to select exactly the same data that you selected to have Excel average. Click Enter, and there's your standard deviation. Okay, so your standard deviation uh, is 12. 0.34 beats per minute. Uh, so essentially what that's telling you is that to capture 68 percent of your population um, of non-smokers in this class, you'd have to go, your average is 73 beats per minute, you'd have to go up 12 beats per minute and down 12 beats uh, per minute from that average to capture 68 percent of your data set. All right, so that's how much variability is there. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for my non-smokers equals STDEV, open parentheses, select the data you want it to calculate the standard deviation of, enter, and our standard deviation is 11 beats per minute for our smokers. All right, now what we want to do is we want to get those standard deviations on our graph in the form of error bars. So what I'm going to do is move those uh, values over here to make it easier to plot that. So again, uh, in, on a PC you can just click, hit control, click again, and you can select multiple data series. Now I'm going to right click and select copy and then I'm going to paste those values up here next to my averages. And again, I want to do paste special and just paste the values, not the formula. And so now those numbers have been transferred over here. Now to uh, keep myself from getting confused as to what everything is here, I'm going to type in what these columns represent. Okay, so the averages I've already plotted on my graph. Now what I want to do is add error bars that are depicting these standard deviations onto my graph. And how you do that, uh, just like we did last time when we want to manipulate our chart, we need to make sure the chart is selected. Uh, and if it is selected, you'll have your chart tools. If you click off, notice that your chart tools menu goes away. So click on your chart. And in this case, we're going to click on the layout menu. And in that layout menu, you should have the option to add error bars. Now the way that we've manipulated our data here and done our calculations, we've already calculated our standard deviation. All right. Um, so the thing that uh, sometimes trips students up is that they want to add or, or select under error, the error bars menu, they want to select this option, error bars with standard deviation. Don't do that. We've already calculated our standard deviation. Okay. We want to tell Excel 
what values to uh, select for that error bar. So let me show you that again. What we want to do is click on error bars and then select more error bar options here at the bottom. All right, now here you can choose whether you want both up and down error bars, just down, just up. Generally we're using both up and down because that t shows us the range uh, in both directions around the mean. Um, and then you can choose the style of error bar that you want. This is what you want to select down here uh, to choose the values that the error bars are going to represent. Click custom and specify value. Okay, now we need to move these. Oh, I can't do that once I've selected that. So move these out of the way so we can see the values we want to select. All right, our positive error bar, essentially our up error bar, is going to be these two data. Uh, points and our negative error bar is going to be the same value. Click that little window, say OK, and close, and there we have it. Right. So again, what these error bars are showing you is how far above and below this average you have to go to capture 68% of your data. Now what we can see, having added these error bars on, is that the, the range of our non-smoker values and our smoker values significantly overlap one another, right? Now again, to accurately determine whether these two groups, smokers and non-smokers, really have different resting heart rates um, uh, above and beyond what you would expect them to have just by chance alone, you would have to do a statistical test. You'd have to use a t-test uh, or something similar to do that, um, but for the purposes of this class it's fine just to, to uh, determine that standard deviation, depict it on the graph, and because the range around that average value uh, overlaps so much, we can really uh, just sort of eyeball this and say that these groups are not different from one, one another at all. Okay, hope you found that helpful. Good luck with your data.